Good morning, friends. I am coming at you first thing this morning. I'm actually getting ready to go get ready for the day. I was just working out, got done my workout, and I need to go get dressed and all the things, but I'm going to get breakfast popped into the oven. Some of my household is still sleeping, so I'm going to get this done so that when they get up, they've got breakfast ready to go. Today we have kind of a fun, exciting day, at least for my children and of course for me, but my sister-in-law is coming over with her little ones. We have a blow up pool and we just got that set up. It's getting really warm this week, finally here in central Pennsylvania. And so they're gonna have fun playing in some water today while me and my sister-in-law sit on the deck and just enjoy a nice cool drink and enjoy some bonding and fun time together as family. So we're gonna make a really exciting breakfast. I need to set my coffee down even though I'm like nursing it cause I love my coffee first thing in the morning. But my one sister-in-law actually has a small business. She has a small sourdough business. And the other day after she went to the local farmer's market, Market, she had a loaf left over that she gave me and I thought I've got such a great idea she first of all tells me that this is obviously the best loaf ever to make French toast with and it's a cinnamon sugar loaf I'm gonna let you guys see it up close but it smells just incredible there you can see look how beautiful it is and what we're going to do is we are actually going to make a berry French toast casserole. <laughs> I had to get it all in line there. Um, so we're going to dice this up first and then we'll mix up our wet ingredients that we'll dump over this. Now I will caution you, this recipe is actually meant to be an overnight recipe. I realize it's going to make the bread absorb a lot more of the liquid if it is gonna sit overnight. But I don't have overnight right now to do this, so I'm gonna give it a shot. Once I have the liquid in, I might see if it needs a little bit more milk just because it hasn't sat and absorbed. Um, I'll see kind of how it looks once I get everything in there, but I know that my children are going to love this recipe. All right, I'm going to set my oven here for 350 and get that preheating while we are cutting this up and getting everything set up here. So I just have this loaf here. I'm going to cut it into slices and then into cubes. And since we did not soak it overnight, I'm going to make sure that the cubes are fairly small. I think that's also gonna help with the absorption of the milk and make sure that we don't have very thick slices here either. Just giving it its best shot at absorbing the egg and milk. And oh my goodness, this just looks so fantastic and smells even better. You guys can see on the inside, she swirled in the cinnamon. Oh, so good. And I love seeing big holes like this because that means that this has actually fermented a good amount. We have a daughter that is gluten sensitive, if you're new around here. And um, one thing she can have is sourdough. And so one thing that my sister-in-law does with her business, because there are a lot of people that are gluten sensitive that can have sourdough, is she makes sure she uses rice flour to coat the outside of the loaf so that you're not getting any unfermented flour. So that is so helpful and make sure that everybody's tummy feels great. And it is a bit better to use bread that is not fresh out of the oven to do this type of casserole because then it's going to soak up the moisture as it bakes. I had been on a huge kick of making my own sourdough bread not that long ago. And then I went to Florida, which a lot of you know, my parents live there, so we go down and see them pretty frequently. And I kind of, I think, killed my starter. I think it's, I think it's pretty well history. And so I can obviously get bread from my sister-in-laws. Two of them make sourdough. Um, this one here has her own business making it and then the other one um, just makes for her family But either of them I can bug for either a starter 
or just simply buying bread from them. Um, it's a little easier than taking all the time to make the sourdough. I do enjoy the process, but when life gets busy, that's one thing that goes on the back burner for me, for sure. All right, so now that we have our slices made, I'm just gonna take about three of them or so at a time, and I'm going to start cubing them. So I'll just cut them into strips first and then cube them. And then I actually already greased my nine by 13 here. So I'm going to then go ahead and just throw the cubes in there. And then we'll mix up our wet ingredients to dump over all of it. So like I said, just making sure don't have anything in here that's too big and clunky that can't absorb the moisture we're about to add. And I keep getting little sticky bits of the cinnamon sugar as I'm cutting through this. Oh, if you could only, if there was only smell-o-vision, right? I think I have felt that way for so long making recipes on YouTube. If you could just smell my kitchen whenever I'm making different things. All right, so now that I have all this cut up, I'm just going to layer it in here or just stick it in here, I guess. And I wasn't sure if this loaf was gonna be big enough, but to be honest with you, I almost feel like I might have just enough or maybe even a little bit extra. And the other thing that I did, just because it's not gonna have all that soaking time since we're trying to speed up this process a little bit, is I did trim off a little bit of the heel or like the bottom uh, crunchier side of the crust just to give as much soft bread as I possibly can. The other thing that I did is I did turn my oven down to 325. So I'm just gonna let it bake a little longer instead of trying to speed it all up too quickly. Now we're going to mix up the wet ingredients and we're gonna start out with seven eggs in here. Now obviously my morning would have been a whole lot simpler if I would have made this yesterday, but yesterday was a really crazy busy day. If you guys missed my last video, I actually did film yesterday and it was just a run around day. We had a lot <clears throat> going on. So I did not manage to get this whipped up last night and that's why we're trying to kind of fast forward and make this process sped up just a little bit. So this is kind of like the egg and milk mixture that you would make up to make French toast the regular way on in the frying pan. And so I'm going to go ahead and whisk up the eggs I have first really quickly. And then we'll add in the milk and the other few things here that we need. All right. Put about two cups of whole milk in this. And then we're gonna also add in some cinnamon, about three fourths of a teaspoon of cinnamon. And actually, to be honest, I'm probably just gonna put a whole teaspoon in here because we really enjoy cinnamon. Now we're also going to put some brown sugar into this. It's about a three fourths cup of brown sugar and I'm just gonna go ahead and measure this with my scoop since I know about what I need in here. And we'll whisk that around, just getting everything kind of mixed together. And then the other thing I'm going to grab here is some salt. And my salt container is about gone, but looks like we want about a pinch in this recipe anyways. So I need to refill this, but we'll get there. So we're gonna whisk all of this together and then pour it over top of the bread cubes we have going on over here. And I just always find that it's easier if I whisk my eggs first before I add the milk in, just because then it breaks the yolks for it all to mix together a little bit simpler. Okay, all right, so we're just gonna move our pan right over here and then we're gonna get this thrown into the oven and I'm gonna go get ready for the day. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna pour this over here and then we'll make the topping to put on top of here. And to be honest, I am just going to go ahead and use the same mixing bowl to mix up the topping, but 
we'll let these guys start to soak while we mix the berry topping for this. And I'm trying to get it as even as possible because it's not going to, if I miss any bread cubes <laughs> in this part right here, they're not going to be soaked with the liquid. So I may actually take a spoon and kind of stir this around just to make sure that everything got some milk liquid on it to make sure that we don't have any croutons, which is what would happen if this was not mixed well. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna take a spoon and kind of just make sure that everything got down in some of that liquid and is really soaking up. Oh yeah, this is absorbing very, very nicely. I think that this is going to work perfectly. We're kind of hacking the recipe here without letting it sit overnight. I can already tell that with the size of the cubes that I cut, it's soaking up the liquid really well. I think if they were bigger, it would be struggling a little more, but I think this is gonna work out great. All right, now for the topping, we are going to take about a half cup of butter and I have cold butter here, but you want to start out with it cold because we are going to cut it into some flour and brown sugar. So I'm actually gonna take my butter. I don't know if you can see how I have the camera angled, but I'm gonna take my butter and take the butter knife and I'm going to cut it into chunks to start off with just to be able to use my pastry cutter. This is a pastry cutter. I waited way too long to get myself one and I just highly recommend it. It's been so useful for so many different projects in the kitchen. And I'm just going to kind of cube up what I've got going on here so that it's easier to start cutting it with a pastry cutter. And then I'm also gonna be using a gluten-free flour for this part because we are gonna cut it in to the flour and it's already getting softer just sitting on my cutting block right here. Okay, now I'm gonna throw the butter into the pan that I was just using, I mean the bowl that I was just using and it's not really that big of a deal because it just had the egg and stuff in it. Now we're gonna go ahead and add a half cup of brown sugar. And this I am gonna measure just so we get a nice consistency with this. So we're gonna do a half cup of brown sugar and then I like to use the King Arthur gluten-free brand. By the way, this recipe is not originally gluten-free. So if you're not worried about that, you can just use regular flour. And I try to make the recipes most of the time interchangeable that I'm using so that it doesn't matter. But if you need a gluten-free option, I'm here for you, I'm here for you. So I like to use the King Arthur measure for measure flour for most of my gluten-free recipes, unless I'm using um, almond flour or something like that. But as far as like a good blend, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do a half cup of flour into this bowl. And then we're going to take the pastry cutter and cut it into the flour. I pulled you in a little closer so you can see how I'm doing this. And the great thing is pastry cutters are designed with a rounded shape here on the top. I don't know if you can see it but it works great with a bowl. So all you're gonna do is go along the edges and you're gonna cut the butter and it's just gonna make the butter into even smaller pieces. This is how you make pie crust. If you've never made a pie crust, this is pretty much the process of making a pie crust. Little different measurements and maybe another ingredient or two, but this is how you do it. And I definitely recommend making your own pie crust. It's not as hard as it may seem. Do it once or twice and you'll be able to do it the rest of your life. All right, so I'm just chopping away. And sometimes you gotta tap the sides because the butter is gonna get um, kind of clogged up in here. But this is why you wanna start out with cold butter. You don't really wanna soften your butter or melt your butter before you do this because what you're wanting from this is these little pieces of pockets, pockets of butter 
that are going to be throughout whatever you are cutting into. And so like when you bite into a pie, pie crust, um, and if it's a well-made pie crust, you are going to notice that there are little pockets of butter, really tiny pockets of butter throughout the pie crust. Now in this instance, because we're actually kind of tossing it, one of the reasons that you're gonna do this is so that the butter is well mixed through the topping and also it's going to help coat the berries that we're about to dump in here too. So it's just a nice method or way to evenly disperse the ingredients through the topping. Okay, so we are about to where we wanna be with this. Um, if I was doing a pie crust, I probably would get keep going a little bit, but we're not doing a pie crust. We're doing a crumbly, yummy topping that's going to have all the buttery goodness in it. So I'm gonna grab my berries to pretty much put the cherry on top of this, right guys? <laughs> so this is one of the big bags at Costco I love to grab of frozen fruit. Y'all go with me to Costco sometimes, so I wanna start showing you how I like to use some of the things I get there. And we want about a cup of berries. Actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and use what I used for my milk. And this is blackberries, raspberries, and blueberries all mixed together and I'm just grabbing them by hand because I don't want any that are in frozen clumps. I definitely want them more like individual berries so that it spreads well throughout. And then I also have some fresh strawberries that I'm going to top off the French toast with whenever I serve it. So we're going to put those in the freezer in a second once we get this in the oven, we gotta get moving in the oven. All right, my camera card ran out of space and I didn't realize it, but all I did was put the crumbly topping. I mixed the berries in and just put that on top of what we have going on. I kind of made sure that the berries were evenly dispersed over the top. And now we're gonna pop it in the oven for probably about an hour and we'll have uh, what I think is going to be a re requested dish from my daughters. This just looks absolutely incredible. And once that butter melts across this, oh, it's gonna be great. So I am going to go and get ready for the day and I'll meet y'all back here for the next thing that we are going to whip up. I have some things I wanna make for my sister-in-law coming. My nephew's birthday was this week, so we have something kind of special and simple that I'm going to whip up for him because obviously I wanna spend time with them while they're here today. So I'll see you all in just a little. Look at how delicious this looks. And with a little bit of maple syrup and some milk, over it, it is going to be just heavenly. I'm going to get a little dish and do a taste test with this. All right, so my sister-in-law is here. The kids are already outside playing. We've been having a good time. I'm gonna call them in to eat some breakfast, but I am going to taste this. This looks so good. I really think the efforts I put into it to kind of skip over that overnight portion of the recipe worked perfectly. I mean, this is so incredibly moist. It's steaming. I don't know if you can see from that far, but absolutely delicious smelling. So let's see if the taste matches the great aroma that we're getting out of this. Oh, wow. Mm. And you can tell that it's been made with sourdough. It has a little bit of that sour taste, which we love in our house. The topping is delicious. I'm gonna dish this up, and I know some kiddos that are gonna be thrilled with this breakfast. Wait till you taste it. It is so good. I wanna hear your reaction to what? Yeah, okay, here, just take that. There's a little bit of mine left, you can taste it. No, like just try it without anything on it. That is so good with the sourdough. I know, it just oh. complements it like perfectly. It's so good. What's wrong, sissy girl? Come here, you want to taste something yummy? I could give her some. It is just like, I can't, I think it su has such a great texture even though I didn't do it overnight. It's actually so exciting that it's sourdough. I know. Because I'm... And, and the gluten-free um, oh, yeah. topping. Yeah. So it's like perfect. And you can see it has the protein from the egg and stuff in it. 
but I had to make this more. Yeah. And I then bet you could freeze it because sourdough freezes really well. I know. I think too it would freeze super well. And be like you even something you could make in on a Monday and then eat through the week. It's like breakfast ready yeah. to go. It probably would taste better if it sat for a couple days. Yeah, yeah. It just it smells so good. I am gonna go ahead and slice a few fresh strawberries on top of these just to give them a bit more color once again. And my sister-in-law and I were just talking about how this is so delicious that it almost doesn't even need maple syrup. Like, it's just so good. That topping really pulls in a nice sweet flavor. And I don't know, I don't know if it needs it or not, but we are going to put some milk on it and let the kiddos enjoy it. What do you think of it? Good. Is it? Yeah. yeah. All right, so we have been outside. I think I'm getting some sun. I've been laying out on the deck with my sister-in-law in the sunshine while the kids play in the pool, get wet. They've been having fun. We've had popsicles, all that. And so now I'm gonna start in to some lunch. So we are going to make some bacon ranch mac and cheese and some grilled chicken on like basically like a chopped salad. So a grilled chicken chopped salad. So I'm going to start out by getting the pasta made up. I just have this brown rice elbow macaroni pasta that is gluten free. And I think my water is almost ready for that. And we're going to boil it. Oh, yep, it is ready. We're gonna boil this um, just under done, basically, since it's going to go into the sauce and then go into the oven. So that time is about eight minutes. We go on the lower end of it. So I'm gonna dump that in here, add a little bit of salt to that, and we'll let that boil and I'll set a timer here. While that is happening, I am heating up this skillet right here. And I have some bacon that we're gonna pop into the skillet to fry up to go in the mac and cheese, but also to give us a little bit of bacon drippings to start our sauce. All right, I opened the pack of bacon in the sink over there and just brought it all over here. So I'm just going to kind of stack it all in and ooh, we're almost boiling over over here. Let me turn this down. And then we'll just fry this up right in the pan. I buy bacon in bulk and then I divide it out um, ooh, into vacuum sealed packages for in our freezer. It's one way to save on bacon. And I will just kind of move these around to be able to fry all of this in one pan. All right, so while the bacon is frying back there, I'm gonna go ahead and season up some chicken tenders to throw on the grill for our top salad. So I've got the tenders here, and then I'm using the Kinder's Margarita seasoning, super good, especially with chicken. So I'm just going to shake that over these and then go throw these on the grill so that everything will be done, hopefully around the same time. Even if the chicken cools down, that'll be fine on a nice, chopped salad. All right, the bacon is almost done frying and then we're gonna start in to our mac and cheese bacon ranch sauce. So that's just about done. But while that is finishing up, I wanna show you something I made this morning as the kids were eating breakfast. I made these gluten-free cupcakes. I just made them out of this little cake mix um, just because we have the gluten sensitivity. So. We're gonna do something kind of fun for, with these for my nephew's birthday since it was just this week and since they are playing in water today, we are going to make some little beach scenes on these cupcakes in a very simple way. So if you have kiddos that you're going to be entertaining this summer at any point in time, 
These should be a fun, easy little way. You could even buy cupcakes already made that aren't frosted and do this yourself. So I'm just going to whip up some frosting. I have a little bit of butter back here. I'm not really gonna do measurements because we don't need a ton of it. So I'm just going to put some softened butter in and I'm going to kind of whip the butter just a little bit. And then I'm gonna add in some powdered sugar and some water. And then I'm going to add something that I've actually gotten quite a few requests for the link and I will relink it in the description of this video. And that is this um, no artificial dyes food coloring. We tried not to do too much food coloring. Obviously it comes in some shapes and forms in our house um, depending on what we're buying. But I like to use these because they don't have any dyes in them. I'm going to just flip my bacon back here, keep everything going. This is a lot of what I don't show is multitasking in the kitchen, or I should say I haven't shown as much of. So that is what I'm going to try to show you more often is whenever I'm not filming a recipe, you know, with the voiceover and all of those things, a lot of times I'm doing this. I'm doing a lot of multitasking. So I'm gonna add in some blue because we are making some water with this frosting on these cupcakes. And I'm just gonna keep mixing. I just started out with a little too much water, which is fine, and then the butter. So we're gonna keep mixing in some powdered sugar. And you can just keep adding in food coloring as you go, depending on what color blue you are going for. And this, I wouldn't even mind if it ends up being a bit swirled. That would probably give it a little more of a watery look if it was a bit swirled. But I'm pretty happy with how these food colorings do. They do show up pretty well. And usually you've got a nice color for frosting or anything where you might need a little bit of food coloring. So there we go. And I'm not piling this up. It's really gonna be more of a icing than a frosting. So just needed a little bit and I think we've got a pretty good consistency here. Okay, I'm just gonna be pulling out the bacon and I have a plate here with some paper towel on it. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this bacon fat out of the pan, but we're gonna leave some of it in to start our sauce. All right, so I poured out some of the bacon fat and then I have some of my home canned chicken, but you can also use about three cups of any shredded chicken. So if you want to, you could even get a rotisserie style chicken and use that. We're gonna spread that out in to the bacon. And then we're gonna take the pack of ranch seasoning. I think I might have mentioned this. Not sure if I mentioned this. You'll need a packet of ranch seasoning. Um, and you're going to shake that over the chicken. And obviously this is, flavor is going to get stirred into the pasta as well. I'm going to reserve just a little bit of it to put into the pasta sauce too. So we're just going to let this kind of the flavors combined, a little bit of bacon drippings, the chicken and the ranch seasoning. Back here I have the pasta. I did add in some olive oil to just help it not stick to together too much. And now that the chicken has combined, I'm just going to put it back here with the pasta until we have the sauce together. And the sauce is gonna be started out with some butter, which I'll put in here. And then we're going to also add in the garlic, my little garlic cubes I use in every single video from my freezer. And we'll make kind of like a garlic butter as the base. So here is our butter and our minced garlic in ice cube form. All right, so now that the garlic has cooked just a bit and started changing color, we're gonna shake in a few tablespoons of flour and I'm going to be using gluten-free flour to do this and then we're gonna whisk it until it starts to 
kind of get gloppy is probably the best way to say it. And there you go, it's happening already, just like that. And then we're going to slowly add in two cups of half and half. So I'm gonna just add it and then whisk it just because we don't want it to separate. And that can happen very, very quickly, as you'll see. And if I keep on stirring, keep on whisking, it will eventually combine here. And we'll start to have more of a sauce instead of cottage cheese, like it looks right now. And I got little ones that are waiting for their lunch. They have been coming and asking me, is it ready yet? So trying to keep on moving here. This is technically a baked recipe. And I think what I'm gonna do, because this is gonna be much more than what we need for lunch, is I think I'm going to take some of the first portion of this before we put it into a baking sheet and give it to the kids for lunch. And then I'm going to take what's left over and put that into a smaller baking sheet and we can have it as a side for dinner because I know my husband would really love this as well. So we're also gonna be adding in two cups of heavy cream as well. We're just gonna let this all get really hot and keep on stirring with it. At this point, I'm gonna add in the rest of that ranch packet that I did not add to the chicken. And whisk that in as well. And then we're just gonna get this simmering and we'll start adding in the cheese once it heats up just a tad bit more. Okay, so while I was icing the cupcakes, this kind of came up to a simmer and you can see it's a little bit thicker. So we're gonna be adding three different kinds of cheese. We've got some white cheddar, some mozzarella, and some Parmesan. And I'm just gonna hang on to a little bit of the white cheddar, well, a little bit of all of it. And we'll mix that together and then we'll top off whatever the kiddos don't eat um, to bake tonight to go along with our dinner. So I'm going to take my whisk and just get it to the point where the cheese has pretty much melted in. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut up some bacon, put that into the pot with the chicken and the noodles. And then we pretty much have the whole recipe together. The kids are out on the porch eating their lunch, which by the way is very approved by them. I'm going to make my salad up here in a second, but I'm going to use the Teddy Grahams to make these into some little ocean scenes or beachside scenes or fun in the sun scenes, how, whatever you wanna do. But to make some sand for our beach scenes, 
We need to actually crush some of these up first. So we're gonna put them into a Ziploc bag here and I'm going to use the bottom of a glass to crush them up to make a little bit of sand. All right, so to make some sand, I just put it into a freezer bag. I feel like freezer bags hold together to crush up crackers a little bit better. So just did that and I'm crunching it up with the bottom of my cup here. So to make this a clean activity <laughs> and to make it go faster, I'm just dumping this into the bowl and I'm going to take one of the cupcakes and I'm just gonna dip part of it into the crushed crackers to create just a little bit of sand on the side so that I don't have it all over my countertop. We'll see if this holds up to be able to work. Since they sat for just a little bit iced, I'm taking just a little bit of warm water and dabbing it over where I want the crackers to stick. And voila, that worked perfect. So I'm gonna go through and just put a little beach on each side of the cupcake. And then I have a pack of umbrellas here that I'm going to use to create our little scene. So we've got the water, the sand, we can put a little guy on the beach, like so. And I'm going to take these fruit strips. And this is one way to get around using stuff without food coloring for your kids. I'm always on the hunt for things like that and dyes and things like that. And there's so many kids nowadays that actually have such sensitivities to it as well. So when you're making it for parties, this is just some ideas to kind of get away from using things with dyes. So I'm just taking the 100% fruit strip and cutting it to make a raft or a beach towel or whatever we want it to be here on the cupcake. And then we'll put a little guy here. He's floating in the ocean. And then I'm going to take some cocktail umbrellas. And these were kind of hard to find, but I did find them at Walmart. And we're gonna put one of them on the beach as well. And I know that this is going to be such a highlight for the children whenever I take these out there to them. So here we have the whole beach scene played out on the cupcake and I'm gonna get the rest of them all dressed up like this and then give the kids some of these. <laughs> <laughs> I know the cupcakes. Close I'm just eyes. Kidding. Close I don't know out. what they are. Okay, keep your eyes closed. <laughs> okay, you can open them. <gasps> I'm gonna pick one. I'm gonna pick one. I'm gonna pick one. Do you want pink? I'm picking this one. This one. This one. <gasps> I think I'll pick this blue one. He's so cute. Just like me. See, he don't eat that. He don't eat that. <laughs> Mine's so, so did you guys it. look really carefully at the cupcakes? Mom, Jay, how like, look at your guys. Mom, how would you open it? I know, I see him in he the stuck sand. It. What's wrong with him in the sand? Is his he's head? Stuck. <laughs> Is his head in the sand? Yeah, he's stuck. I he's thought I would do Hello. some of them doing handstands in the sand. Hello. <laughs> Mine is in the. In the sand. Mine is buried in the sand. And his floaty is all is a fruity flavor. Mm. Yeah! But look, he's just going he's just laying a in egg. the sun. Look, no, he's in the sand. He's in the ocean. <laughs> All right, if you hear something running in the background, it's just the dishwasher taking care of business. So today was a wonderful day with some family, with some sunshine, with a little bit of fun with the cupcakes. It just really was a good day. I am beat, I'm not gonna lie. I think when you're sitting in the sun, it just kind of takes it out of you, but we still have to get through dinner. And this is when I am thanking myself for prepping things 
when I have a bit more energy. So we're gonna get to that in a second, but I do like to make myself a little drink to make dinner, especially when I need a little pick-me-up. And I've been wanting to try these swoon drinks. There's some, I think they have a lemonade, they have a couple different iced teas. So this is the half and half lemonade and tea. And that can is just so fun, isn't it? So I just have an, some ice in a glass and I'm gonna crack it open and try it with you all. It has no added sugar, which is big for me and it is sweetened with monk fruit and stevia. So great natural sweeteners. And I'm just gonna pour that over ice. And it fits perfectly in there. And we're gonna give it a try. I can already smell it, it smells so good. Lemonade and iced tea is one of my favorite combos. Oh my goodness just like an Arnold Palmer. Wow, this is good. I'm gonna need to get some more of these. For this next weekend, we are going to a cabin. These would be absolutely perfect to be sipping at the cabin. So good. Okay, so now on to dinner. I'm going to put my oven on at 350, take out my frying pan that I have in here. And now whenever I was done cooking the uh, mac and cheese for lunch. I said I was going to save some of it as a side for dinner and my husband's really excited about trying this out. It was a huge hit. The kids asked for seconds. That's how yummy it was. So I kept probably about, oh my goodness, maybe a quarter of the cheese out to top this off with. It's just in a nice little glass baking dish. So I'm going to pop this in the oven as it warms up since I did just pull it out of the refrigerator. And sometimes it just works out best when you're warming things up to warm it up with the oven because I don't think I've ever personally had it happen, but you can crack glass if it's going from the refrigerator to a hot oven. So something to keep in mind. And I also, one second, I need to grab it. Pulled this out of the freezer this morning. Now this is something that we prepped together a couple of videos ago. This is the honey garlic chicken for skewers. So I'm gonna get out some skewers and I'm gonna load these up to go on the grill. I'm also gonna go start our smoker. That's what we grill most of our things on. And so I think I'm going to do that and I might see what veggie I feel like pulling out. I may do some like stir fried green beans or something like that. All right, so I did go down into my freezer and found I have this really big bag of the thin string beans, green beans from Costco. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I actually turned on my cast iron pan back here before I ran down there. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of the pan. And I like this bag because it's um, resealable and I can kind of dump as much green beans in as I want to, whatever I feel like doing. And I do add garlic to these, but I don't add it until closer to the end um, because otherwise you end up with burnt garlic. And our family actually really loves these string beans. So usually I can make a pretty big pan of them. Sorry if that's crinkling a lot in your ear. But usually I can make a pretty big pan of them and they most all of them get eaten. So I'm actually going to put this into my freezer up here. Let's see if I can get it to reseal. I'm gonna put it into my freezer up here so it gets used up because I kind of forgot I even had it downstairs. And so I'm just gonna throw that right in here. And it's nice having deep freezers, but it's also a thing to manage what we want down there, what we want up here and not forget about things. Okay, so while those are heating up, the mac and cheese is in the oven and I'm still sipping on my drink. I'm actually drinking this pretty fast. That's how good it is. As a kid, we would ride bike everywhere. So I'm from a very small town area. Riding bikes, um, a lot of kids still do it because it's just something, it's easy to ride bike to town and 
the few miles and go exploring when you're to the right age. And that is a memory I have of me and my friend. We would bike to a little cafe and we would get Arnold Palmer's and the ones that were in huge cans, I'm sure they still make them. I just don't usually drink that much sugar at one time, but the ones that are in huge cans and we would chug them because we had biked, you know, a handful of miles to get to the cafe and then we would drink them. So like, it's kind of a flavor that just parches my thirst because it's, I associate it with that and I love it. So anyways, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to skewer up this chicken. Now, this is the chicken, like I mentioned, that we prepped. They are already cut into pieces. And what I did is got it out of the freezer a couple of hours ago and I just let it thaw completely. And while it's thawing, it's actually marinating at the same time. So that's what's really nice about this is you're gonna get a chicken that is very well marinated even after freezing it. So I'm gonna take my rings off here so that they don't get all chickeny. And I'm just gonna use a nine by 13. It's the perfect size to keep the skewers in so that we can take them down to the smoker. And these skewers do not take long at all to cook. So, or to grill, I guess, would be the better term. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're gonna make chicken skewers because they are um, pretty small pieces of chicken that you're putting on. It doesn't take very long for them to be done the whole way through. And another little tip I have for you, which some would say to put the whole piece of chicken on at once, but it is nicer to eat it in smaller pieces, more like bite size, but you can shove them together so that the moisture stays a little bit better inside the meat. So the, the idea behind putting an entire piece of chicken strip or tender of chicken on the skewer would be to keep the moisture in the meat and to make sure that it stays nice and juicy. But I like to kind of go both ways with pushing it together so that it stays nice and juicy, but yet still have the bite sized pieces on the skewer. And I think what I'm gonna do, because these are honey garlic, I think I'm going to actually skewer these up and then I'm gonna mix up a little bit of honey and oil and drizzle it over the chicken as we put it on the grill too, just to kind of amp up that honey. It definitely smells like garlic in here. I think it's gonna be very, very good. We love anything with garlic in our house, as you well know if you watch often. I put it in a lot of recipes. All right, so I was here getting ready to mix up the honey and the oil and Corey decided, or not decided, he suggested to put a stone ground mustard in with this and I think it's gonna be really good. So he's just gonna drizzle it on and then we're gonna take it out to the smoker slash grill and what, we'll probably scoop the excess onto them. Yeah. Baste it on baste it, as it cooks. Yeah, kind of baste it as it cooks um, on the grill. So I think it's gonna be a great addition. We'll have to let you know what we think of how the end result is. But the honey just helps to caramelize the outside of the chicken and it ends up so delicious. All right, once the green beans are about to the tenderness that we like, which we do like them a little on the crunchy side, um, sort of stir fried, I put some butter in the middle of the pan. Then I take some garlic, and of course my little frozen garlic cubes here, and I put that in with the butter. So like I said earlier, you just don't wanna go do it too soon because then you're gonna end up with burnt garlic before the green beans are fully cooked or where you want them to be. So essentially once they're cooked, you're just gonna use the center of your pan to make garlic butter and then you can stir it throughout. So I just get these to dissolve 
And then once they're kind of um, not frozen anymore, I make sure that the garlic doesn't look very white anymore. It's more transparent and then it's ready to be stirred through the green beans. All right, so this is about the color that it gets to and honestly, just how it smells. I can also tell once it's very aromatic, then you know that it's ready to be stirred in. So I'm just gonna stir this all around and Corey actually just went out the door to go and get um, the chicken skewers, our dog is having a fit because he went out the door without her. <laughs> but as you can probably hear her whining in the background. So everything is pretty much ready. I'm ready to pull the mac and cheese out of the oven. All right, we have been eating out on our screened in porch more and more these days with the weather turning so nice. And as you can see, Corey already test tasted the chicken and he said it is delicious. <laughs> And then we have the bacon ranch mac and cheese, all hot and ready to go, and the green beans. I am so excited to dig into this. Corey just said, I can't wait to eat this meal. <laughs> Here is a video of how I built our patio garden. You guys can go ahead and check that out here. Thanks a lot for joining me today. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I had a great time spending the day with you and I'll see you all in the next video.